with the release of Sword and Shield on the 15th of November, I've jumped onto my sketch pad, put together three new designs for you to represent your Team Starter, Team Skull Bunny, Rookie Gang, or Team Sobel. Hop over to the Teespring store now. You can grab a 10% discount with the discount code STARTER. Hello friends and welcome back to another episode of our Pokemon BGC 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and today we're going to be playing with the Zerndon team that we kicked off with at the start of the week, courtesy of Yuki. You can see the team report down in the description below. Check out the team, take it, try it out, and if you do try it out for yourself, do let me know. I'm really interested to know how other players have been getting on with this team. I'm obviously repping the skull bunny shirt if any of you lovely people have bought yourselves one of the team starter shirts make sure to tag me in a twit uh, on twitter or instagram and let me know that you've got one or even just drop a comment down here let me know and even if you don't want to buy one even if you don't want to rep a squad i would still love to know what starter squad you are in are you team skull bunny team sobble are you in that grookey gang i don't know about grookey grookey might turn out to be an awesome end pre-evolution like it's end evolution might be amazing so i might change my mind again i doubt it though but the only one i'm really considering if sobel is like this badass water dragon i'm i'm gonna be sad that i i betrayed it but it'll be fine because i'll just go between skull bunny and sobel <laughs> i don't need to stick with one anyway let's kick into it today i hope you're having a great day whatever you're up to as always remember to drop a like on the video if you do enjoy this sort of content please remember to subscribe to the channel because we have a boatload of pokemon content planned for when sword and shield does drop and uh, as always leave your comments down below i do love hearing from you all and i will make sure to try and reply to as many of you as possible sometimes just because of life i don't have the time to go through each and every one of the comments and and reply to each one but i will always leave a like and i will always leave a little heart it means i love your comment and I love the fact that you've commented so explaining that okay let's get into it today we've got our first opponent of the episode we've got a Japanese player rated 1614 and running a team of we'll hop straight into team preview and find out okay they are running a team of Smeagol, Rayquaza, Xerneas, Cartana, Crobat and Rotom Heat this team looks lit literally I love the look of it I really do we've got the Smeagol there it's got the fake out support redirection support Threatens with spore support as well. Then you've got the restricted combination, the requires of the Xerneas. We know all about these two. The Xerneas, it wants to set up. It's got the Smeagol support next to it. Probably one of the better supporters in the format. And then the requires are just a big powerhouse there. Potentially could be Assault Vest, but you never know what variant it could be. Cortana there offers speed control and a steel type on the team, which it desperately needs to help against things like Nihiliga that otherwise would cause this team a lot of issues. You've got the Crobat there, sets up speed control as well with tailwind and then the rotom heat gives that ground immunity and uh, fire typing as well to the team and electric which is very nice so uh, it can potentially burn a lot of things apart from ground on but we can't really hit the rotom because um we don't have a way to to hit it so um thinking about this gengar is going to be good because it can trap in things like xerneas things like smeagol taunted shut it down stop it doing things um uh, i'm not bringing coma all <laughs> <laughs> to this one uh, we'll go Groudon um, I think we'll go Xerneas for sure and uh, Crobat because I think it's the most it makes the most sense I'm hoping I've got my mic set up like really good so it cuts out all background noise because at the moment Thea's having like a field day We've started giving her like food like the last two weeks. It's hilarious. Like um, <laughs> some of the food like yogurt, like natural yogurt. It's like she really likes and then pulls this mad face because it's so sour. Um, but she's had a pear this morning and literally just chomping down on it. Like it's the best thing in the world. I do like a pear, but I mean, she, that's like, I guess when you haven't ever had like very many things to eat and you have a pear and it's like, what is this? I don't know why I'm talking about pears either, but anyway, <laughs> let's get into this one. Um, we've got Groudon. Uh, what I was meaning was she's 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 really happy and making lots of gurgly noises and stuff, so you might hear that in the background. But hopefully, like I say, Mike should be set up where I cut that out. We've got Rotom Heat. We've got Rayquaza anyway. Um, okay, the Rotom Heat is a bit of an issue for us for sure. Uh, this it's not the best 
best lead for us at all. Um, because we've not really got a way to, to damage the Rotom Heat. The Rayquaza threatens both the Gengar and the, the Groudon. Um, hmm, what do we do? Uh, we could, we could Mega Evolve. Protect. But what are we going to get from protecting? Really, nothing. Uh, we could Mega Evolve Icy Wind. That might be a play. Um, we could, we could protect Groudon. Uh, I don't really want Groudon taking, um, an Earth Power. Um, and if we lose Gengar, then that's fine. We still got Crobat to fall back on with Azernius. Just having that speed kind of boost would would help the Groudon get maybe an eruption off, doubling up with a Sludge Bomb potentially into that Rayquaza or the Rotom, whichever one we kind of feel that we can go after. Best. This might be the best play for us. We we might potentially lose Gengar, but um, like I say, we've got Crobat to kind of fall back on as well. So it's not the end of the world. Well, the Rotom does threaten our Crobat, but as long as the Delta streams up, we've got that little bit of extra protection. So you've got to keep that in mind. Protect the Groudon, and we're going to see an Alat switch. Ooh, sneaky, sneaky little toaster. Uh, it's, it's an oven, really, isn't it? We get the icy wind off. It is uh, dampened by um, the Delta stream, so it's not going to do as much damage. But the main thing, wow, is that a crit? It's not a crit. That does a lot of damage in Delta stream. Well, lots of speed, that's the main thing. Earth Power, it's into the Gengar, unfortunately. Hmm. But Gengar, you did alright. You did alright, my friend. Because now we get the Xerneas onto the field. It's Life Orb Rayquaza. It's got to feel threatened as well this next turn. Um. So I think what we could potentially do is Geomancy and go for an Eruption. Um. Because I think what my opponent might try and do is switch the Rayquaza out. Because it's so threatened now. Like a Moonblast will pick up the Knockout. Um, and maybe try and get something like Crobat in. And if we can catch the Crobat with, with an Eruption. Then it's going to be in range for a Dazzle or a Moonblast. Uh, that is my thinking. Then you should take a Life Orb Dragon Ascent. If my opponent's ballsy enough to keep that Rayquaza in. Which I don't know if they will be. Because I'd feel like... Oh, they have. Oh, we got to We should have just went the Moonblast or the Dazzle. <laughs> oh, no. Because the Life Orb Dragon Ascent is going to do a lot of damage. I'm hoping Yuki has, has EV'd this thing uh, well enough to take Dragon Ascent and whatever the, the Rotom decides to chuck out at us. But actually, we get the Eruption off. Is this going to be enough? I don't think it will. No. It does some decent damage. Okay, Earth Power. That's better, actually. Okay, I don't mind this too much. Groudon hangs on with a sliver of health. And the Rotom going for a... <laughs> what is it this week with Psycho Pokemon? <laughs> oh, okay. Um, right, we'll have to go Dazzle. Uh, extreme Speed is definitely a thing. Um, hmm. And Overheat is definitely a thing as well. Uh, ooh. Uh, do I protect Xerneas? Although, nah, we don't protect Xerneas. We could just Moonblast the Rotom. It's just a bit annoying because we've got to kind of go... F we've got to commit to, like, an Overheat, really. That's that's what we've got to do. Um, Dazzling Gleam. We need to get rid of the Ray. And, um... Mm, 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 mm. Let's bring in... Let's bring in Crobat because there's no way you go for... A thunderbolt into the Groudon slot. Ah, oh, Psychop. Psychop Rotom. Come on. Extreme speed. Yeah, you're going after the. Oh, you're going after the Xerneas. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. That's going to take it down. Okay. We I mean, may have been better going for a. Um... Oh, no. <laughs> what is it with this this week on the channel? Psychop Rotom. I mean, it's a great Xerneas check. I did say it in a comment uh, from Monday's episode. Like, all the best techs, in my opinion, always come at the very end of the format. Jeez. Man, that is just ridiculous. Ah, uh, we're done for. We can't... There's no way we can outspeed this Rotom now. We've been properly best of wanted. If that even is a sentence, which it's not. 
wanted. Uh, right, well, we've got Groudon to bring in. <coughs> hmm. And uh, good old Smeagol hitting the field. I mean, we can try a his. I don't. I don't suspect we'll be able to get a his off. Like no way. And I think what my opponent probably will do, even though we have inner focus, is go for a to break a potential sash on the Crobat. Um, we'll go for an overheat into the Smeagol. Uh, and we'll try it a Tailwind, I guess. No, we haven't even got his. Um. Mm. Yeah, this is just done. We're done for. A hazeless Crawlbat is no good to us right now. Yeah, break a potential sash. Volt switch plus two. Yeah, we're done. We're done for. I mean, the Volt switch, it's gone out, and then we're going to see Xerneas come onto the field. <clears throat> it doesn't even matter that you're losing the boost at this point. It's a really nice strategy. I'm going to take this to a PC. I definitely am. So. Whoever you are, Mystery Trainer, thank you very much for the idea. <laughs> I do like it though. It's it's a really good inventive idea, especially in a format full of Zendon teams. Uh, Rotom Heat, it's a really good pick because it just does so much work. I, th I you know what? I'm just gonna. I have to. I can't. I can't. I can't do it. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna press the forfeit button here. We're gonna have it. Um. I'm pleased we got to feature, like, I'm sad about the, the result, but I'm pleased we got to feature this team. Um, and massive props to my opponent. Really good, good, good inventive core, and uh, one I will look forward to trying out. In other news, before I forget, tomorrow, tomorrow night, it is Halloween. Well, tomorrow's Halloween. So, tomorrow evening, over on Twitch, I will be doing a special Halloween Battle Spot themed stream. So, if you'd like to come across... The link to my Twitch channel is down below. It's going to be the beginning of my stream schedule starting up again. I want to get in some time this week. We'll be doing a lot of st <clears throat> streaming next week and the week after. And then following into Sword and Shield. want to get back on the Twitch train. So uh, if you're around tomorrow evening, if you're not out partying or trick-or-treating, uh, do come over. It would be lovely to see all of you. Uh, we've got Gaiachi VGC up next. So we'll get into team preview. <coughs> Okay, so they've got a team of Groudon, Bronzong, Kangaskhan, Incineroar, Cortana, and Xenius. Okay, I feel like this one might be one where we could sneak in Coma All, potentially. Uh, if we can deal with the Xerneas, um, I do feel like it's, it's one that we could potentially do some work with. Okay, if we, we have to bring Gengar. Um, we'll bring Coma All. We'll definitely bring Groudon, and we'll definitely bring Xerneas, and we're locked in. <clears throat> and we are ready to go. We are ready to go, my friends. So, let's see how we get on in this one. Let's hope we can bust out some combo or action. And big shout out to Teddy as well. Left a comment on the video yesterday saying that we should run double team combo or. So, we may give that a go uh, by the end of the week. If not, we'll be streaming a lot next week, and I'm sure I will feature this team at some point next week. So... I will definitely feature it then, if not this week. But my opponent just taking their time, just thinking it through, thinking what they're going to do, how they can deal with this comma all, because they're scared of it, super scared of it. They're not at all. They're like, Zern will just one-shot it. <laughs> if we can deal with the Zern, I think the comma all matchup gets way, way better, which is the logic of anyone that would be playing comma all. Um, I do like the, the pink shades and the pink shirt, though. I'm excited for customization in Sword and Shield. It looks amazing. Like what we've seen of it so far, it looks so good. Right, we've got. Uh, I think the Incineroar is probably Zemus. I think. But we can taunt the Bronzong. Um and go for a Zemu. I feel like that that's a good a decent a decent way for us to start this start this show off. So let's go for the Clangorous Soul Blaze. Let's hope we can get it off. There's no Ray sitting in front of us. There's no Zern sitting in front of us. So it feels like it's going to be good. We want to shut down the Trick Room option on the Bronzong. We might see Z Trick Room. It could be an option there. Um, but we'll we'll try and get the, the Taunt into it. Regardless, it might be Mental Herb. But I don't know. Let's see. Might be Super Berry. 
Z trick room. Okay. All right. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world because, like, at least we can like waste a turn of my opponent's trick room by just double protecting the next turn because they cannot switch out. Um, and if we double protect, then they cannot U turn out. Um, so that's exactly what we'll do. Um, because that turn might come in quite valuable at the end of this game. You've got to imagine that my opponent's going to bring in the Groudon on that Incineroar slot. They'll try and pivot out. I, I think one thing that we could potentially do as well is bring our own Groudon in on our Gengar the next turn. Um, just in case we do see a Dark type move there. Uh, and I'm going to go for the, the Clangor Soul Blaze. 100% with the comma because we can catch Groudon with that we'll do a decent amount of damage and the boost will be nice and we can maybe stall out the, the rest of the trick room turns until we get into a position where we can bring stuff back in and start beating down on, on stuff um, so there's protect from combo O and Gengar and imagine we see a U-turn Jarabol yeah and uh, Roar Ah, huh. no, we need Koma all in. But I mean, Groudon's not the worst thing either because an eruption now will do some fat damage to that Bronzong. Um, okay. We'll get this desolate land up. Yeah, and I mean, if we can take down the Bronzong now, which is, that would be really nice. Uh, it does mean that we can, um... We can prevent any more speed control for the rest of the game. So I'll bring, I'll switch Gengar out to Coma All uh, to take a potential Dark type or Fire type attack. Um, just to protect Gengar because I would like to keep it for the, the late game when Xerneas probably will pop up. And I'm just going to go for a, a big old fat eruption. And that should take care of the Bronzong and do some decent damage to the Incineroar. So there's a Gyro Ball. Bulletproof! Excellent! <laughs> yes, the best ability. <laughs> I didn't realize it got Gyro Ball as well. That was just uh, such a fluke that I just did that. Okay, uh, there's the eruption. The problem is dealing with the the um, the Groudon, uh, the opposing Groudon when it comes in because it will be probably set up to to operate in Trick Room, so a lot slower than ours. And I think well, we've got one turn of double protecting, but can we get around two turns? with our own Groudon. Like, that's what we've got to do. We've got to try and get around two turns of Trick Room and preserve our Groudon. It might mean sacrificing Gengar, but then again, like I said, I think keeping in mind that we want to keep Gengar for the Xerneas at the end of the match probably makes a bit more sense. Um, ba -ba 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 -bum. Let's go for a Protect. And, I mean, we can double Protect here. It's just, the only thing is, like, does the Groudon Sword Stance that would be a little bit of a worry for me and why I might want to go Clangorous Soul Blaze right now and just protect our Groudon. Because I don't want to get punished for, for allowing them a free turn. That's the one thing. It just goes for the Precipice Blades. Okay. I don't think Comet or takes this, unfortunately. Not on just straight up. Nah. Okay. We'll go down. Critical hit. It doesn't really matter anyway. And it goes for the U-turn out on its own Gengar. So it's going to bring the Xerneas in. Hmm. We're going to try and Geo. Ah. Geo on the last turn of Trick Room. Smart. It's smart. It is smart. I mean, we could do the same, to be honest. And hope we take... And like, literally hope we take a Precipice Blades, which I'm hoping Groudon should be able to take a Precipice Blades, at least one, and then fire off an Earth Power in return. So we'll go for the Geomancy, we'll go for an Earth Power. It's all about whether we take the Precipice Blades or not. And it does hit, it does connect, unfortunately. We do take it, okay. There's the Geo from my opponent. I think, like, our hand's a bit forced here where we had to... We had to bring in our own uh, Xerneas and match the Geomancy. There was nothing else we could have really done here. Um, so I think we're just we're doing the right thing, knowing that we can take a Precipice Blades. The only problem is that we've taken so much damage from um, the the Precipice Blades from the opposing Groudon. 
it's made it very difficult for us. We do get the Earth Power into the Opposing Groudon, take it down. And maybe thinking about it in hindsight, the, the previous turn would have been the turn to go for the, the Earth Power. Get rid of the Groudon before we bring our Xerneas in. Um, and then by doing that as well, well, we wouldn't have denied the U-turn because the U-turn would have went before our Earth Power. But at least we would have had a... As, as Xerneas would have been in a lot better shape. Although we would have had to contend then with the Incineroar and the Xerneas on the field at the same time. So they cover in bases really well. So it was a nice play all round. Um, the Incineroar going to come back onto the field now. Uh, it's definitely a Moonblast range. So I mean if we can get a Moonblast into the Incineroar. I feel confident that Gengar could potentially deal with the Xerneas one on one, but we'll see. I'm going to go for Protect just to burn the fake out, and I'm going to try and overheat into that Xerneas. If we can get an overheat off, it will probably match kind of damage with what's already been done. So, fake out into Zern. I'm going to just see a Dazzle. Dazzle, Razzle, Dazzle, yeah. And this will take our Groudon down, unfortunately. Hmm. Okay. So the sunlight fades, fades away, the Gengar. So I think what we could probably do is just Moonblast Incineroar, Sludge Bomb, the Xerneas. Um, and hope that maybe they make a bit of a mistake. And hope the two Sludge Bombs is enough to get the Zern. I just don't know. I'm just not too... F I'm not that familiar with these calcs from Gengar. I've not used... Gengar enough. We do outspeed the opposing Xerneas, so that's good. That's good news for us. We do get the Incineroar. Moonblast. Is it into our Xerneas? It is. This should take us down, I'd imagine. Yeah. But if we get a poison as well, that's huge for us. Like, that really is huge. A free Sludge Bomb. Poison. No poison! Ah, we're not gonna... I mean, we, we're gonna get another Sludge Bomb off. Depend how much, like we need a poison now because if we get a poison now, we can probably stall this out and win. Sludge bomb, come on, come on, Gengar, be strong. No poison, come on. <laughs> every time, every time. We do it, we don't get it. Anyway, good game to my opponent. They position themselves really well. We, co we can't really make too many complaints. You know, the one thing that we could have said we could have done differently, I think, is that Earth Power just a turn earlier, and I think it might have turned the game a little bit, and made it a bit easier for us, but it would have made things a little bit harder in the long run where we had the Xerneas in the Incineroar. It would have been difficult. My opponent played it very well. So props to my opponent, and definitely big props to my opponent in game one with that Rotom star of the show i think today i hope you've enjoyed today's episode i've had a lot of fun we've had another couple of really good games with the team although the the, the results aren't really what i would have liked but we can't always um get everything we want can we um we still haven't got the coma all working either so hopefully we've got two days left with this team we can try and do that i'm gonna cut off here have a great day my friends morning afternoon night whatever time of day it is wherever you are and i will see you all for the next one so take care and until then bye bye